Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Christ Lutheran, at Christ Lutheran Church. To all of you here in person in the sanctuary, and also to all of you worshiping with us online this morning. Uh, so, Pastor Dennis and myself, and Reverend Dr. Mark Jerry, and Frederick Frum, and Deb Roberts, and Doug Hilderman are freshly back from our Saskatchewan. What? And Ruby Russell. Ruby Russell too. She was a, a. They were a youth delegate. Yes. Thank you, Ruby. After all those conversations about including youth, um, we're freshly back from the Saskatchewan Synod Convention, and Pastor Dennis will share a few highlights, uh, and then. Um, and then uh, Frederick from, with the input of all of us, will uh, write up a broadcaster article uh, to be, so more details can be included if you want to know more information about, about the Senate Convention. Um, so I wanted to mention that I'm going on continuing education leave next week. I leave uh, Sunday morning for Manitoba, and then I'll be back on the 15th. I'm taking a class called Land-Based Relationality, Community and Reconciliation. Uh, I'm very excited. It's being led by a gentleman named Adrian Jacobs, who is uh, from the Haudenosaunee um, First Nation, and I get to participate in a red buffalo pipe ceremony, a wood ceremony, a Haudenosaunee um, uh, ceremony. So anyway, I'm very excited to be participating in that. And then I also wanted to uh, remind people of Vacation Bible School starting July 29th. Uh, please contact uh, Carrie Frostad if you're able to volunteer. And then also volunteers are needed for the communion preparation ministry for June, July, August, and September. This is about a half an hour to an hour prior to the service, half an hour uh, of cleanup after the service. Um, we didn't have a volunteer for May, so myself and Carrie Frostad and her family ended up doing the setup, and I think it was Carrie's family that did the cleanup. So we're able to cover if we don't have any volunteers, but volunteers are certainly appreciated for that. And those are all the announcements I have for this morning. Good morning. So, um, oh, check, I got, we got something here? No, check, check, there we go. There we go, thank you. Um, First of all, the uh, flower arrangement in the middle of the altar here uh, is uh, given by Luther College in gratitude for using uh, the sanctuary for their home concert, which was held this past Thursday. And that uh, was a wonderful uh, concert for those who are able to take that in. Um, I'd like to note that um, we've got a broadcaster deadline coming up. So if you have something you would like to submit, uh, we'd like it into the office by June 10th, please. Uh, and then a couple of things about the Sundays coming up. Next Sunday, uh, uh, June 9th, we'll be holding a, a pride service here. And, um, and you can read about that in the bulletin. And then the Sunday after that, which is uh, June 16th, we're having a new members Sunday. So a couple of special events coming up in the next few weeks. Um, and then uh, what I wanted to share with you about the... Um, convention is that it was a good convention um, and the highlight probably the primary highlight is the election of the new bishop and the new bishop for the Saskatchewan Synod is Reverend Dr. Ali Toti and uh, for those of you who uh, uh, don't know him he's originally from the Cameroon but he's been uh, in Canada ever since his seminary training and uh, he is a very articulate and passionate uh, person. He will lead the Synod well, I believe, as we move into the future. Uh, and then uh, there was lots of other things that were taken care of at the uh, convention, but uh, for me, one of the highlights was the presentations by the youth uh, who spoke to a couple of things. One was to land acknowledgments, and the other was just a reflection on what happened uh, at the convention and what they thought was important moving forward in terms of children, youth, and young adult uh, ministry. And they spoke very well, very articulately, and, uh, and sometimes with humor. So I'm gonna tell you the one thing that, that got the whole convention laughing, okay? They were asked by one person, what was something about the convention that was surprising or unusual? And Ruby went up to the mic and said, coleslaw.
It was absolutely brilliant. It was great. <laughs> Anyways, so if you want to know more about what the youth were discussing, you can speak with Ruby, and she can share with you in more detail about that. So read the, uh, the broadcast article when it comes out. That'll give a little more detail about what happened. And now uh, my final announcement. For three years, we've been blessed to have Carrie Frostad as our parish worker here at Christ Lutheran Church. Unfortunately, that time is coming to an end as Carrie's husband, Greg, is starting a new job which is based in Esterhazy. Carrie has graciously committed to remain working here at Christ Lutheran until the conclusion of Vacation Bible School in August, but then she will move permanently to Esterhazy to be with Greg and Alex. Their three daughters are remaining in Regina due to their university studies. We will have a formal expression of gratitude and farewell for Carrie following uh, Vacation Bible School uh, in August. But you are invited to express your own appreciation to Carrie and her family uh, today and in the weeks to come. I would also like to announce that the Church Council has formed a parish worker search committee that will be working on finding our next parish worker in the near future. So we ask for your prayers, both for the Frostheads in this time of transition and the church council as they engage in the search for a new parish worker. So I invite us all to take a few moments of quiet reflection as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. We begin with an introduction to the theme of the Bible readings. We will hear from the reading from Deuteronomy that Sabbath keeping is meant for the welfare of all. God delivered the Israelites out of slavery so that they should observe this freedom with a day of rest. In the Gospel reading, we will hear that Jesus doesn't reject Sabbath keeping, but defends its original life enhancing meaning. Our worship and our religious way of life are led to restoration the hungry being fed, and the sick being healed. Please rise as we sing our gathering song, Gather Us In, 718. And for those folks who like to follow worship in the book, we are uh, following uh, with one voice service of the word, and it looks like uh, the slide.
And we continue with the service of the word from With One Voice, if you're interested in following in the worship book, and we'll begin on page 46. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You are the treasured people of the Lord. A people holy to the Lord our God. Keep the words of the Lord in your heart and teach them to your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. We continue with the scripture song. Please be seated, and I'll invite Carrie up to do the Sunday School recognition. Good morning. I would like to invite all the children up to the front, whether you've been to Sunday school every single Sunday, where you come occasionally, or even if today is your first time coming, you are welcome and invited to come up and have a seat. Hi, Kate, come on up. And I'd also like to invite all the leaders. Yeah, we'll spread out so everybody can see you. Today, I want to intentionally acknowledge every person up here. They come, they participate, even when we know they're busy with other activities, as whenever they can, they come. And I want you guys to know that, yes, you are the future of the church, but you are also the church of today. And the love I see you sharing with everybody and the learning that you do, you really are disciples of Christ. And I am so proud of each one of you. And I want to take a moment to acknowledge you. So I've got a certificate for each one. And a balloon. First one is Avery. Emily? Can I have that? Avery? Alex, you got a balloon? Uh, oh. Not here. Brooklyn. Cooper. Cooper? There, oh, there's Cooper. Uh, Harper. Inara. Where's your balloon, Inara? Jeslyn, <clears throat> Kate, Here you go, Kate. Lexi, Parker, Ooh. 
Peyton. Natalie. Now, Natalie's sister is in a ball tournament and couldn't be here. So, Natalie, could you please take Rebecca's certificate as well? Thank you. Rowan. Simmy. Oh, you're right here. Jack. Uh, where is, oh, there they are. Noah. Zach. Did I get everybody up here? Awesome. And there are quite a few kids that couldn't be here today. Are we missing a certificate for someone? Do we all have one? Okay, so I will make sure that the rest of the certificates and the balloons for everybody else will be available for when they can next make it. Can we get a round of applause for our Sunday School class? All right, now Sunday School wouldn't be the success that it has been without all of the leader volunteers and um, many of them were Sunday school students that have graduated. Rowan, I'm hoping next year maybe we can count on you. Uh, so I'd also like to take a moment to acknowledge each of them. So feel free to spread out so everyone can see your face. So when I say your name, just maybe give a little wave. So we've got Ron. <laughs> And Emily, Owen, Julie, Alexander, April, and Mary. Ashley had to work today, so she couldn't be here. And just to also mention that three of these leaders are our confirmation students. So what an excellent way to, to serve. I also forgot to mention Jayton as well. He's another confirmant and leader. He could not be here today as well. Are you guys ready to go upstairs and get ready for that picnic? Yeah, I got Owens right here. All right, let's go upstairs and we'll get ready. So the kids are heading upstairs to decorate the cakes that Carrie made for our picnic today that we get to eat for dessert. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Oh God. Mold us today, we pray. Sculpt us as your jars of clay, brimming with spirit alive and new, visible bearers of life of you. Amen. And we continue with the scripture readings. In the uh, Deuteronomy reading, this portion of the Ten Commandments instructs the Israelites to keep the Sabbath. The Israelites are to rest and they are to allow their slaves, their livestock, and the foreigners living among them to do the same. They were once slaves, and so they are to treat their own slaves justly. 
So a reading from Deuteronomy, the fifth chapter. Keep the Sabbath day and treat it as holy, exactly as the Lord your God commanded. Six days you may work and do all your tasks, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Don't do any work on it, not you, your children, your servants, your oxen or donkeys or any of your animals or the immigrant who is living among you so that your servants can rest just like you. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out of there with a strong hand and an outstretched arm. That's why the Lord your God commands you to keep the Sabbath day. Here ends the reading. Inspire our understanding, the Spirit of God. In the second reading, we hear that when we carry out God's ministry, we do, not, uh, we do so not for our own glory, but for the sake of Jesus Christ, whom we proclaim as Lord. The power for ministry comes from God, not us, so that we persevere no matter what, trusting in God's power and promises at work through us. So here, a reading from 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. We don't preach about ourselves. Instead, we preach about Jesus Christ as Lord. And we describe ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. God said that light should shine out of the darkness. God is the same one who shone in our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay pots so that the awesome power belongs to God and doesn't come from us. We are experiencing all kinds of trouble, but we aren't crushed. We are confused, but we aren't depressed. We are harassed, but we aren't abandoned. We are knocked down, but we aren't knocked out. We always carry Jesus' death around in our bodies so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies. We who are alive are also being handed over to death for Jesus' sake so that Jesus' life can also be seen in our bodies that are dying. So death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Here ends the reading. Inspire our understanding, Spirit of God. Please rise as we sing our gospel acclamation, Word of Life. Jesus challenges the prevailing interpretation of what is lawful on the Sabbath and tells his critics that the Sabbath was made for humankind, not the other way around. Healing the man with the withered hand is work that cannot wait until the next day. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the second chapter. You, Jesus went through the wheat fields on the Sabbath. And as the disciples made their way, they were picking the heads of the wheat. The Pharisees said to Jesus, Look, why are they breaking the Sabbath law? Jesus said to the Pharisees, Haven't you ever read what David did when he was in need, when he and those with him were hungry? During the time when Abiathar was high priest, David went into God's house and ate the bread of the presence, which only the priests were allowed to eat. David also gave bread to those who were with him. Then Jesus said, The Sabbath was created for humans. Humans weren't created for the Sabbath. 
This is why the human one is Lord even over the Sabbath. Jesus returned to the synagogue. A man with a withered hand was there. Wanting to bring charges against Jesus, the Pharisees were watching Jesus closely to see if he would heal on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the withered hand, Step up where people can see you. Then Jesus said to the Pharisees, Is it legal on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But the Pharisees said nothing. Looking around at them with anger, deeply grieved at their unyielding hearts, Jesus said to the man, Stretch out your hand. So he did, and his hand was made healthy. At that, the Pharisees got together with the supporters of Herod to plan how to destroy Jesus. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Through your word, we pray you would melt us, mold us, fill us, and use us. Amen. So the Bible reading from Deuteronomy makes it clear that Sabbath keeping is meant for the welfare of all. There are seven days in a week, six are made for working, and the seventh day is for a Sabbath rest. And the Israelites are reminded that when they were slaves, that once they were slaves, but God delivered them out of slavery so that they should remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy and not ever work anyone else seven days a week even servants and animals should have the opportunity to rest. God gave us the gift of the Ten Commandments, and among them is the Third Commandment, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Well, in the Gospel reading from Mark, Jesus doesn't reject Sabbath keeping, but he reminds the crowds of its original life-enhancing meaning. While the Pharisees point out to Jesus that he and his disciples are breaking the Sabbath, not only by traveling on the Sabbath, but also by picking the heads of the wheat, Jesus reminds the Pharisees, the Sabbath was created for humans. Humans weren't created for the Sabbath. And then Jesus reminds them of that scriptural precedent of when King David was in need and he went into God's house and he ate the bread of the presence and also shared it with those with him because they were hungry as well. So what exactly is Sabbath rest? Well, I'd like to suggest it's more than just a Sunday afternoon nap. Sabbath rent, what, Sabbath rest is intended to be life-giving. In our busy 21st century lives, we are invited to recommit to Sabbath life, a Sabbath perspective, perhaps more than ever before. A recommitment to a Sabbath life and a Sabbath perspective is more than just going away for a long weekend or planning for that long overdue vacation. A recommitment to a Sabbath life is about renewing and restoring our lives so that we may be reoriented to enter into each new week, looking for ways in which we might renew and restore the lives of others as we follow Jesus' example. Because keeping the Sabbath isn't just about our rest, but it's about so we can be rested, so that we can be there to assist with the well-being and the rest of those around us. We're also invited to rest so that we can notice the abundance that we already have and rejoice and give thanks for that abundance. And perhaps that's the key thing about Sabbath rest, 
It invites us and encourages us to stay, take a step back, stand apart from all the things that usually consume us, so that we might be better able to see God's presence in our lives. To be better able to see God's providing, God's blessing, and as we become aware of how God is with us, and how God has provided for us and blessed us, we experience a sense of contentment, and we give thanks. Now, Sabbath rest can be about a weekly routine of rest and self-care, and it can also be about a daily routine of rest and self-care, as we ensure that we take time each day and each week to intentionally slow down, take stock of our day, take stock of our lives. We're encouraged to take time each day to see how God has been with us through the day, provided for us through the day, and blessed us through the day. And it's also about taking time to reflect on how we've been able to care for others throughout the day and throughout the week. The Sabbath is intended to enhance life for all of us, as we are also invited to strive to work toward the well-being of all of those around us. And we can look to Jesus' example in the Gospel reading of Jesus seeking the well-being of those around him. Jesus broke the religious rules of his time that were misunderstood, misinterpreted, to heal people and to restore them to the fullness of life and full acceptance within community. And again and again in the Gospels, we hear about Jesus entering into the suffering of others, particularly the suffering of the marginalized and the most vulnerable. And Jesus' response was always a response of empathy and non-judgment. Those of us who are willing to enter into the suffering of others know how exhausting it can be. Whether we are entering into the suffering of those who are experiencing grief or illness or other challenges of life, or whether we're entering into the suffering of those who are among the marginalized and the vulnerable, we know how exhausting it can be. Jesus reminds us that we need to care for ourselves so that we are able to care for others and continue to bring about the healing and wholeness that God desires for the whole world. What does Jesus, what does this gospel reading tell us is Jesus Jesus' reaction when he sees the religious leaders putting misunderstood rules and politics ahead of the well-being of the marginalized and vulnerable. The Gospel tells us, looking around at them with anger, deeply grieved at their unyielding hearts, Jesus turns to the one in need of love acceptance and healing and stands with that one and restores him to community with a heart full of love and empathy. The person with the withered hand was able to come out of the shadows and be restored to community. And the opposition that Jesus faces is the opposition Jesus always faces. And this reminds us, following Jesus is risky. We understandably prefer safety. Yet Jesus continues to call us to vulnerability and empathy. And he doesn't just call us, Jesus models for us going to the most vulnerable of people continuing to love and embrace and help all those Jesus encounters, 
even when Jesus is misunderstood. Jesus is always out standing with and embracing the marginalized and the vulnerable, putting that ahead of misunderstandings and misinterpretations of rules and the politics of the day. Even though it eventually leads to his arrest and crucifixion. But that is not the end of the story. Through the resurrection, God promises that love always wins. God promises that love is stronger than fear and hate and death. And that is the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is a gospel of hope for all of us. But it is heard as particularly good news for the most marginalized and vulnerable among us. The Sabbath was created for humans. Humans were not created for the Sabbath. Jesus models for us care of self on the Sabbath day so that we may care for others. And Jesus invites us to recommit to a Sabbath life of renewing and restoring our lives. So may we set aside Sabbath time each day and each week so that we may daily give thanks to God for our many blessings, so that we may share those abundant blessings with all those around us. Amen. And I invite you to stand as we sing our hymn of the day that reminds us when we seek first the kingdom of God, we know we are following Jesus. We continue with the response to the word. In Christ you have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. It's seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
Build yourselves up on your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Look forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you all in eternal life. Amen. Please be seated. God has given to us in great abundance, and we're invited to share that abundance We sing our operatory, Glory to You. Glory to you, God, for yours is the earth, yours the anointing, the radiant word. Ours the rejoicing for spirits of blame, ours the thanksgiving to your holy Ours be the telling of deeds greatly done. Yours be the glory, O oh God, yours alone. Let us pray. God, our Creator, you open wide your hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature. With these gifts, we bless you for your tender nurture and care. Help us to delight in your will and walk in your ways through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayers. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Prayer petitions will end with merciful God, and the congregation is invited to pray the response. Receive our prayer. Guide your church to expressions of faith that bring rest and release. Teach your faithful people to be attentive to the spiritual, physical, and societal weariness of our neighbors, that we proclaim your grace through tangible acts of mercy and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Keep us mindful of the rhythms of nature as the days lengthen and the seasons shift towards summer. Grant relief to areas facing flooding or drought and bring favorable weather for the flourishing of crops, gardens, and orchards. Merciful God, We pray for the Saskatchewan Synod and all who contribute to the Synod's ministry across this province. We especially pray for our newly elected Bishop, Ali Tote. Give a spirit of wisdom and discernment to Bishop-elect Ali Tote and to the Saskatchewan Synod Council as they continue to minister in your name and to your glory. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Provide wellness and respite to all who are weary, those who struggle in any way and those who care for them. Strengthen first responders and healthcare workers in their times of exhaustion or frustration. We pray for those in hospital and especially this day we remember Anne Nosbacken. 
And we also pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. And we especially pray for those who mourn the loss of Irwin Wentland. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Stir our hearts toward abundant generosity among neighbors who experience hunger and food insecurity. Bless feeding ministries and community food efforts, especially community gardens, farmers markets, Trinity Food Pantry, Carmichael Outreach, Indigenous Christian Fellowship, the Regina Food Bank. Open both our hearts and our tables. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Please rise for the blessing. May God, our Creator, fill you with every spiritual blessing. Amen. May God of faithfulness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. Amen. And may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. O oh, Amen. And we sing our sending song, All Things Bright and Beautiful. It'll be found in With One Voice, hymn number 767. Maybe before we sing, just a couple of quick instructions about the picnic. Um, so uh, you're all welcome to stay for the picnic. And as you make your way outside, just go down the ramp to the patio at the back there. Um, and uh, you'll be given a name tag uh, so that we can uh, visit with one another and the food will be there available for you. Um, and uh, maybe uh, in order that we can just start right in on the food, I'll say a table grace with you now. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for this gathering, and for the food we're about to receive. Uh, we thank you for those who have prepared this and uh, ask that you would bless uh, our time together. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. The uh, council are the, uh, the people who have put the, the uh, picnic together, so if you get a chance uh, to meet the council members, say a word of thanks to them. Now we'll sing.
in peace, inspired by Christ, to love and serve. Thanks be to God.